Okay, so my first question is, uh, in terms of gameplay, what changes have you made since FIFA 10? Okay, so there's a lot of changes been made. So basically, this, we take the FIFA engine and we improve on it. We, we put a lot more effort into it in the time FIFA ships. We improve on it to the time we ship. So what you'll find is um, a very much improved engine over FIFA. So if you're a FIFA gamer, you'll notice a lot of differences straight away. The differences vary from feature to feature, but we've made over 100 improvements um, from core mechanics, from passing, shooting, that kind of thing, to complete rewrites of like penalty kicks. In, in World Cup, penalty kicks uh, taking a lot more importance and relevance. So we want to make sure we captured that. So that's a complete rewrite, brand new system. Um, and then also we'll address some of the issues may people maybe had with FIFA head on, may maybe some of the major complaints or whatever. We get a lot of feedback from our consumers uh, and we try and tackle those issues straight away. So you'll get a, a much more polished uh, engine, uh, a much more improved and then a whole bunch of new features on top. So could you give us a, a specific example of something that, that you've uh, changed Okay. based on feedback sure so uh, one of the uh, a common complaint on the forums was the in FIFA that was that the keeper would come off his line quite a bit and allow an easy chip over him so you get a lot of similar goals where the, the user would just do uh, chip it over the keeper so you won't see that again in, in FIFA we fixed in, in World Cup we fixed that and there are a whole bunch of other examples like that we've kind of taken consumer feedback and, and dealt with it directly so you you mentioned the penalties is there anything else specifically about the world cup that makes you want to change the game a little bit well one of the things about the world cup just the nature of the the tournament is that um, it's got a lot more casual uh, gamer appeal uh, casual gamers we know through kind of research in this want to play football games but maybe a little off put by fifa and its complexities the kind of control system so in order to embrace them we've done a new controller scheme where basically it puts all the functionality, the regular functionality onto two buttons, so just pass and shoot. So what that does, it allows a, a novice user to come in and compete on a much more level playing field against a, a, a more advanced user. So a dad can play with his kid or vice versa or whatever. So it, hopefully it will embrace a lot more players and get a lot more people interested in the whole world of FIFA and they'll see what all the fuss is about and why so many people love the game. So how did you achieve that? Is it context sensitive or how do you do it? Yeah, so it's context sensitive. So, um, so basically, if, if for example, I was passing to a teammate and there's a defender between me and, the, and the, my teammate, on FIFA I would have to manually do a, a lofted through ball, a lofted pass. With the two button controls, you'll just press pass and it will put the optimum type. So you're still very much in control. It's key to note that it's not like the AI's pulling strings. You're still a full movement, full decision making. It's just that we're, the, the game will use the optimal decision. So, in terms of presentation, what's, what's important to get that right uh, atmosphere of the World Cup? Yeah, so the World Cup's is such a, a great event. Um, and if anyone's lucky enough to have been to one, you'll know what I mean. It's kind of this 32 teams uh, descend on the host nation and it's, you get these, all these different cultures and, and different kinds of people. And it's a real kind of party carnival atmosphere. And that's such a, a, a crucial part of the World Cup. It's something we definitely wanted to capture. So what you'll see in the game is, uh, for example, we have the crowd fully rendered, and that will vary from, uh, from every team. So 199 teams in the game, and each have their own unique crowd and unique headgear and all that kind of thing. So we really kind of capture the, the cultural um, differences between the teams. Similarly, there's like, it's like a big party. There's uh, confetti streamers, camera flashes, the managers are in there. So all these kind of presentation elements that make the World Cup such a special event, we've definitely tried to capture, trying to capture that kind of carnival atmosphere. I always call it kind of the Rio, the, the Rio carnival meets football, is kind of for people who don't know what the World Cup's all about. Did you include those annoying whistles that the South Africa? We did, yeah, yeah the Vazulas, yeah, the horns there in there. We actually were a little worried that it might frustrate some people because it sounds like. Can you turn it off? You can turn it off. We put a slider in there to control the volume, so yes. Yeah, I mean, I love them. A lot of people love them. We've actually got a lot of positive feedback. There's not that much negative, but just in case people don't like the sound of like 50,000 angry bees coming through their speakers, we allow people to turn it down, yeah, so. Can you tell us about the online mode? Yeah, so online World Cup, we've actually for the first time ever managed to get the entire online, uh, entire tournament online. So from group stage through to final. Something we've been trying to do for a long time, but one of the, the inherent problems with an online tournament featuring complete users is um, it can often grind to a halt if someone drops out or you have to devote like four hours to from start to finish. So those are two of the main things that we wanted to try and, and uh, address and also waiting around for people to join and all the rest of it. So the way we've done it is you join, <clears throat> so you pick your team and you start in the group stage and you meet someone at the same level as you in the group stage. And that process continues throughout the whole 
tournament. So you get to the quarterfinals, you'll meet someone at the quarterfinals. And it's all server-based, so it's all stored server-side. So if you hop out at any stage, next time you go on, you'll be at exactly that same stage. So it makes it a much more accessible and open tournament. You can literally come in and out as you want. Um, so it, it, through testing, we found it hugely popular because it is so open and so free. And as any user knows, beating the CPU is one thing, but beating a, a real-world user is that much sweeter. So the fact that you can do that continually now through the uh, online World Cup will be a huge, huge mode. So basically, it's like uh, uh, a tournament where you are the one progressing and then opponent gets picked for you yeah. at the appropriate yeah. stage. But can you also like do a tournament with just friends or? No, because we we want to ensure again, like, harking back to the kind of cardinal sins of the the, the, the online tournaments that we kind of devoted and get and gave every user that ability. Um, so yeah, we've devoted most of the time to creating that, so everyone can actually play the tournament online. So that's when you have to invite 32 friends to your home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can do that. You can play 32 locally if you've got that many friends. <laughs> Hopefully, I do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm speaking generally, not you personally. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.